in part three of how to change the automatic transmission fluid in an Aston Martin DB9, I'm going to show you how to refill the system with this now that we've gotten rid of all of this. In this episode of Aston1936.com, we're going to continue our process of changing the automatic transmission fluid in a Touchtronics 2 six-speed automatic transmission fitted to my Aston Martin DB9. In part one of the video series, I showed you how to, uh, why you'd need to change it, uh, what parts you need, what tools you need, and a few of the prep steps. In part two, I showed you how to disassemble the transmission, drain the fluid, and remove the seals. In this video, I'm going to show you how to reassemble the transmission, fitting it with new seals, and how to do the initial bulk refill. So let's get started. All right, so refitting the, the new seals, I'm going to get them wet. I don't mind using the old fluid for that. And I'm just going to push them up in the hole. These go up pretty easy because they're not squashed and they should sit a little proud. That's normal because uh, they basically, that's how they're going to make a seal when we bolt it up. Uh, so get the next one, a little dip so it slides in there. The medium. All right, so all four of those are up in place now. They're all sitting just a, about a millimeter proud, which is perfect. Um, now we're going to put in the Medcatronic bridge seal. Just going to get the seal lip on both sides moistened up. I've already taken a, a lint-free rag and cleaned up the sockets a little bit. There really wasn't anything in there, but it can't hurt. And it should just work its way in there. There we go. Only goes in one way. All right, it's time to refit the mechatronic unit. Um, the main thing to focus on here is re-engaging this fork prong in the slot where it was that I pointed out earlier uh, in that solenoid. So that's all I'm going to focus on. We don't want to bend anything. And just sort of sighting my way up over that. I'm there. Now I'm going to ask my cameraman to hand me a bolt. Basically, we're putting in bolts in positions one and four to start with. Four, which is straight to the back. And those will be able to take the weight. Double checking I'm still engaged. Now I'm gonna loosely fit uh, all seven bolts. Okay, uh, with all of those at least uh, hand started, can't tell you by slime vision how every one of these tools now is so slippery, it's gross. Um, but we're gonna basically we start by slowly tightening one and four uh, evenly until we get the body pulled up and in contact. Definitely feel it starting to pull itself down. One is right between all those valve seals, and four is right beside the mechatronic seal. So that's bottomed, and that's bottomed. So now I'm going to go around and follow the, the snugging pattern one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten from the diagram again. I'm referring to that, and I haven't got that memorized, so we'll do this in time lapse.
All right. So now let's uh, get the torque spec and use a torque wrench to tighten them up, file them out. So the torque spec is eight Newton meters plus or minus 0.8. So I'm using a quarter inch fine detail torque wrench set to eight Newton meters. We're going to torque it in the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, in the correct order. So this is one for this from me. Three is beside one. Four is opposite one. Six is this guy. Seven is this guy. Eight is the center. Nine is furthest. And ten is closest. All right, one mechatronics unit reinstalled. So next up, we want to get the electrical pins and the electrical sleeve cleaned up. And I've got a can of electronics pin cleaner. Um, you can get this at any hardware electronics store, or even your auto supply store. I just want to give it a... Because in case any oil got onto those pins in all the handling, uh, I just wanted to, basically that'll wash it off. There now with my rag and get the, any residue of the cleaner off the... Uh, O-ring seat, make sure the O-ring seat is nice and clean. And it is, so over here on the bench now, I've got the new electronic sleeve. And I'm gonna use a little bit of the old oil just to lube up the O-rings. So I've heard this is gonna go in harder than it came out because the O-rings have some volume to them again. And uh, just basically gonna push um, to get it in there. Uh, and I'm not sure if it's going to matter, but if we can look inside here, there's also uh, a tag, t tab. Hopefully that shows. It's plastic. Yep. So um, I'm going to put that down for whatever reason. I don't think this is keyed any other way. Oh, there is a, maybe there's a little bump and a lip on there. Um, so uh, I'm not sure how that lines up. And I've got this. I'm going to turn it to see if it. There we go. So I was rotating it, and then suddenly it felt like it would go in further. There we go. And I think I still have to go a little further because there's two O rings. Yeah, so that might be all the way home. The way we'll know is. The uh, white connector will now go up, so let's give it a try. No, nope. if this doesn't go up, we're not in far enough yet. So I've been struggling for a few minutes trying to get this to go in back in far enough with the O-rings being so good. Um, and I came up with a way to help it. Basically, it's about a millimeter or two short from making it um, and it has to be all the way in so I've got a little piece of one by three that I'm putting across the face and then I'm just getting in here with a big screwdriver or pry bar just to get a little bit of purchase and lean it in there and once it's all the way in the lever goes up without a fight. So if your lever isn't going back up there without a fight, don't beat on the lever. You don't have to push the tab in or anything while you're doing it. Um, you just basically want to keep uh, working it. And if we see the how much of it is left, the gap here is just a little bit more than a screwdriver blade. Um, so that's what you're shooting for, for this to go up smoothly. All right, it's time to get the new sump uh, installed up in the vehicle. And uh, with a couple little bits of preparation. Uh, the first is we want to uh, lubricate the new O-ring. So there was a protective cap on here. So I'm gonna just get a little finger dip of the old fluid. And 
coat the uh, o-ring so that'll slip in there. The next thing I want to do is I want to do the same idea and I want to coat the uh, uh, whole perimeter uh, of this. Basically there's a built-in gasket here. All right, so I've coated the gasket. I've also cleaned up my bolts. Uh, they're ready to use, all 21 of them. Uh, so I've got those uh, ready to go. And then it's important to point out that ZF has a, for the plastic oil pan on the HP 6HP26, that there's a torque pattern, and I'll, uh, in the accompanying article, I'll have a link to this document. Um, but basically, we definitely don't want to screw it up when we tighten it up. Um, <clears throat> so looking back at this is going to be kind of cumbersome. So of course, you'll all sit there and go, oh my God. Uh, I just used a little blue painter's tape and I wrote the, the numbers by the screws. So this will make it a little easier for me when I'm underneath the car. Uh, might be an idea you want to copy. All right, so uh, uh, let's offer it up to the car got the first bolt here and now what I want to worry about first off here is I've already mentioned you want to double check that there's no o-ring up in the uh, the old o-rings occasionally could get stuck up in the old uh, port uh, we've already checked that that's not there so with that not there and I've already cleaned the gasket surface I'll give it a good wipe down I'm just going to focus on getting this spigot to slip up into that port and you'll feel it. Right now there's resistance. There we go. And I'm going to get the bolt into And I'm not torquing it. I'm just trying to get everything held in place. Now I'm going to grab a few more bolts. So this is a no power tools job. Uh, uh, this is plastic. This is a gasket. We have a very low torque setting. If you use, if I use my electric impact, I would easily over torque it on the second it touched down so um, uh, this is just a take your time do it by hand All right, so now that I have them all uh, hand installed, I'm gonna follow through the same pattern this time with a ratchet, but I'm, all I'm aiming for is just to feel it slightly bottom, and it is sense, you can feel it. So two, three, easy, easy, up, oh, snug. But I'm not trying to torque it yet, so.
All right, so that's all 21 hand tightened. Let's switch over to the torque wrench for the final torque. So the final torque according to the ZF manual is for a plastic oil pan is 10 Newton meters plus or minus one. So I've got my small quarter inch torque wrench here set to 10 Newton meters. And uh, I'm just gonna follow through the pattern one more time. Just like that, uh, we're all torqued back up. So uh, this blue tape numbering idea uh, worked really well. I'd recommend it. If you're lying under there, it's gonna save you a lot of looking around. And next up, we'll get on to uh, uh, hooking up the thermostatic valve. So it's time to put the thermostatic <coughs> flow control valve in for the cooling lines. <coughs> but I thought it'd be a, a good time to uh, actually take a look and see how it works. My thought was that it is completely closed and bypass uh, returns everything. So essentially it sits up in the car like this. This is the pump pressure line from the engine. And I thought it would be recirculating everything back into the, uh, into the transmission until we reached the 76 degrees Celsius. And then it would start letting coolant flow. But upon closer inspection, uh, it's not the way it works. So let me put a light on the other side. You can see here basically the return line is uh, open flow. You can see the spring in there. And then on the uh, pressure side, so my finger is where the pressure comes from, from the transmission pump, you can see the plunger in there and a little piston that'll probably move this way to open up and allow the flow uh, towards the transmission cooler. But I wanted to see if it truly did the bypass. So I have a couple of things here on the bench. I have some plastic uh, rubber size two bungs. And I thought, well, let me, let me plug off both uh, cooler side lines. I'm just gonna blow in here and see if uh, air comes out here. So like a harmonica. Yeah, because the the fluid's going in and just traveling around through the spring area and coming right back out. So when the engine's the fluid's cold, uh, it just basically can bypass and circulate back into the, into the transmission case. So then I thought, well, is this side completely closed all the time? So now I have the outlet on the way to the cooler open and I plugged both of the uh, return lines just because I want to see if air gets by and it does. So this piston, even at ambient air temperature, is not completely closed, which is good news. Uh, in a Bamford Rose video, I heard him talking about, man, you gotta get this thing open to get the coolant line, the coolant uh, or the fluid out of the uh, cooler lines. No, there is a, um, a considerable amount of fluid that's gonna be going by. So either mine is seized up or something, or maybe Aston built in that even at a full uh, ambient room temperature, there's a little bit of flow by so that uh, uh, it's still gonna be restricting most of the flow. But for us, that's good news is because we're not gonna have to worry about burping the air out of the transmission cooler line. So, oh, that's good news. I'm excited. It's weird what gets me excited. All right, let's get it on the car. Refitting it is really just repeating how we removed it. So we have one bit of flexibility, essentially these lines from the transmission case itself, we can have them down a little bit low when we start. And these have O-rings on the end that seat in the backs of these recesses. So I wanna be really careful about getting these fitted up nice, but uh, you do not wanna cross thread these fittings. So if they aren't going in finger tight, you're not doing it right. So there's the back one going. They may need a little bit of a push 
get it into the seat. So I don't really want to tighten this one up, the back ones, but I do want to make sure that they're at least uh, seated before I put on the front one because I don't want it wobbling around massively. All right, so on this side, uh, we need to do just a little kind of tug and pull push. All right, so I just took my time and uh, got all of these started. Uh, I was really being careful because essentially these are steel fittings going into an aluminum housing. Uh, you can cross thread these probably if you aren't careful so don't use a wrench uh, until you are sure they are finger tightening so there these are supposed to be torqued to 20 newton meters but i have yet to figure out how you torque a flare fitting there's no i don't know what kind of torque wrench you can get on here so since they're sealed by an o-ring and 20 newton meters on a wrench this size is just snug that is going to be the official torque spec of asked of 1936. snug snug All right, time to get our two bolts back in. These have torque specs, uh, which I will do in a second. Of course, they're two different size bolts. One's a eight millimeter, one's a 10. This is the bigger 10 going in. The eight torques up to nine Newton meters. So that's the little one. I'm using my quarter inch torque wrench. All right. And the 10 millimeter torques to 20 Newton meters. All right. One thermostatic valve reinstalled. So next up, let's get the electronics connector tied into our new electronics sleeve and so basically that's only going to go in one way and it's going to turn in and click to lock. So once you get it started and then you keep turning until it goes click like that. So that's the position. So just again, that's where you want that one to be. Then next up, we're going to do our parking uh, override release lever. We're going to cut the zip ties. And the ZF manual also states there should be at least a millimeter or two of free play uh, here. You just want to make sure this cable is not tight because uh, they don't want it accidentally getting tugged a little bit so yep there's plenty of slack this is exactly the way mine was um, and I guess we could also double check yeah so mr. cameraman so right now we can check parking and you heard it parking lock you can hear the pawl engaged and if I pull the lever or open again I let go of the lever parking gate is engaged so that's working again. Um, let's get some fluid in it. All right, it's time to do the initial fill on the transmission. Uh, so here's 10 liters of the ZF Lifeguard 6 fluid, because we've got 10 liters of it on the floor. So um, we need to get this back into the transmission. Uh, so there's lots of different ways you can get fluid to go back into the hole. Uh, they all involve some sort of pump so uh, 
if the bottles were the right type, sometimes they have a pointed nozzle and you could get a hose like this and stick it on and squeeze the bottle. Um, that's not gonna work with these ZF bottles. Uh, or you can go out and spend 10 bucks and get a differential or transmission fluid pump. You might have one of these from doing your two year service uh, when you're doing your rear diff oil. Um, but this has to be compatible with the style at the top of the bottle. Uh, it's the right height, but it's the wrong thread. Um, plus you'd be sitting there pumping 10 liters uh, the slow way. So I'm gonna give you a piece of advice. And since you're only gonna do this every eight years, you might wanna invest in a transmission fluid pump. So this holds eight liters at a time. It has different spigots, but this one will be perfect for hooking up into the hole. You can have this on the floor and you basically sit there and pump it like that. Um, and you can put up to eight liters inside uh, the, the container to start with. So this is what you're gonna see me do. Um, yeah, if you're doing it on the garage floor, you'd be able to have that hooked in, have this bottle out beside the car, and you could have your, you know, your sweetie, or you could, re you know, be reaching out and pumping the handle yourself. So the setup is perfect. Um, and the first step in using this, though, is uh, I'm going to put some fluid inside. And here you have a pretty good shot of what the clean fluid is supposed to look like. Nice, clear, um, you know, light yellow color. And compare that to the black stuff we've got in the bucket. So I'm probably gonna put five, or six quarts in here to, or liters in here to start. So this unit's made by Wurzerg USA. So this is a made in USA product and uh, there'll be links on the blog and uh, and I think it was about 80 bucks something like that uh, totally worth it so that's uh, seven liters into the container and uh, we're ready to go, so let's get it set up over by the car. All right, we've moved over uh, by the car. Of course, you're gonna be lying on your back underneath, so you'll need to have a bucket underneath because we're gonna fill it up till it starts dribbling back out, so you're gonna make a mess, it's inevitable. Um, I've got the pump handle here, so I can basically work it. And so whatever mechanism you're using, you're gonna wanna stick the hose into the fill hole. And this has a nice little angled hook so I don't even have to worry about holding it up there. And the procedure is pretty straightforward. We're doing the initial fill because we've, it's completely empty. Um, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to set the final level, but all we're trying to do at this phase is just get fluid in until it starts dribbling back out the hole. And then we're gonna put the fill plug in um, just to stop the dribble. Um, and then we're gonna, in my next video, I'll show you how to set the actual final level of fluid. So let's get started. So there we go, you can see the clean fluid going in. And just for the sake of watching the level, you know, I'm kind of halfway on the, the label. I suspect we're only gonna get about three liters in. Um, we're just filling up the sump area and we gotta get 10 in overall with time. And uh, that's why the final fill procedure is gonna be so important to watch. Uh, but this is just the initial three liters, you know, two or three liters that's gonna fill up the sump Come in over my left shoulder. All right, <clears throat> we're just starting to get the drip now. So I can pull out 
the fill and I'm going to put in the drain plug, the fill plug. I'm not going to torque this thing down super tight. <clears throat> I'm just going to wipe it down a little bit so that I can keep track of anything that might be an actual leak. All right, um, let's have a look at the container and see how many liters that took. I think there's a level indicator on here. So I put in seven and we're down to four. So it took three liters on the initial fill from empty. We're definitely, we got seven liters to go, uh, but we're gonna do that in uh, uh, the official how to fill a, and check the level video coming up next. All right, through the magic of uh, TV editing, uh, the right-hand exhaust pipe's back in the car. So this should be just like you've been working on it. And you can, I still have the heat shield off um, because we still need to, of course, have access to this fill, fill plug. Um, so uh, back to, we've only put three liters of fluid in this thing so far. All we've done so far is put back three out of 10. We are not done refilling the transmission. So this is where you need to stop and focus on getting the proper fill level set. Well, that was an involved process. Uh, that wraps up the servicing uh, of the transmission. It wasn't particularly difficult, so if you were just following along with the steps. But remember, you are not done. Remember, we've only refilled three of the 10 liters we've removed from the car. Um, and we still have the heat shield removed, the cross member removed, the rear under tray removed, so that we can still get access to the fill plug. Your car is not ready to drive yet. We need to complete the final fill and level check, which has to be done with the car running. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to tackle that whole process. So up here, you'll find uh, a link to the video to take you right to it. Um, as always, I have the companion blog article down here. Um, it'll have the details of uh, all the details we covered in this video. And uh, if you like videos like this, please go ahead and subscribe and you'll get notified automatically. As always, I love to hear your comments, so please leave those down below. Thanks for watching.